everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Today I'm working on a couple totes for some garden tools for my daughter and my wife. And the main thing on this episode is how do you do compound angles uh, with dovetails on? So I'm going to be showing you how to do that in this episode. And then I'm going to finish these up today or tomorrow on part two. So this is going to be part one of this episode. So I'm starting this project out actually yesterday and I'm doing a little experimentation with compound dovetails. And this is uh, what I did yesterday. And I'm just using MDF just to do a proof of concept. This is a piece of cherry that started to be my router that you guys saw on the previous episode. And now what I want to do is try to do this in cherry and walnut this is going to be a toolbox for my daughter but my wife wanted one also so i milled up some walnut and cherry i saved you the milling of the lumber getting it flat and straight and now what i want to do is with my peach tree dovetail jig it's going to be a lot easier if i make this dimension like from here over to right here exactly five inches so i left this board a little bit wide on purpose and i'm going to draw a line right there and that's going to be the width of these boards so i'm going to cut them up on this table saw now so i've already put a 10 degree angle on this particular board and uh, so i'm really matching the board to the width of this particular uh, dovetail fixture so from here i gotta trim these all to width. So I'm going to be trying to do two of these at the same time. I might as well keep the the setups the same. Got the dust collection on, now the table saw. Okay, so this is really an experiment. I've never, never really done this before up until yesterday. And what I want to do is make sure that hopefully get this all right because there's a lot of angles and you've really got to be careful about where you have the, pot, the bottoms and the tops of these things. So I've cut a 10 degree angle here and I measured over 16 because the, the, um, the front and the back are going to be 16 inches. And then I drew a line here with the old sliding T-bevel. So I just match that 10 degrees and put that over here. And this is going to give me the reference line so that I can cut these over on the uh, chop box. Okay, so this next cut's critical. I want to make sure the sides are the same uh, length and I have a stop block. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a big outfeed table here. It would interfere with my lathe. So uh, what I did, I just uh, used one of these test pieces as a stop block. And I, I don't want to change the angle of the saw right now. So I just, I've already set this up and I've marked a corresponding line. So I got the thin parts here and the fat parts up here. And that'll be my stop block. So I have uh, four pieces I've got to cut. So I've got the walnut and the cherry, two toolboxes, tool totes, and to start the wife. So I'm going to have to get four of these, and then I'll have uh, these for the ends. So it's nice I've got this angled stop block here. Uh, that line's not good. So by the way, I'm not putting the, there's a, there should be a bevel angle on here also, but it, that makes it a little bit more difficult to put into the uh, dovetail fixer. So I'm going to do that after all the dovetails are cut. Okay, I had this up here before, and that's not long enough in order to make this 12 inch long piece. So I cut another bevel on a scrap piece of oak, and now I'm going to trim all these ends. So 
So let's take stock here real quick. I've got two sides and three ends of cherry and likewise with the walnut. And now it's time to start marking these up because like I said, this is gonna be real easy to make a mistake with the all the different angles. So by my calculations, I'm gonna to have to put this into the dovetail fixture like this and then move it over on this side. And it's important just to rotate that way. And actually it doesn't really matter if you do that on the dovetails. It matters a lot on the pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark what's the outside and the inside. And right now it's pretty easy to see what's the top and the bottom. So I don't really have to mark off uh, the top and the bottom of this. Okay, so guys follow my channel. No, I just uh, made this base yesterday and I liked it so much. And these uh, Ryobi routers are on sale for only 49 bucks. I went ahead and picked up another one. I bought a couple batteries and uh, this way I don't have to be messing around with changing the bits, which is, it's just a little bit of a pain. Okay, so one of the tricks of using the peach tree dovetail fixture is just to get the first draw line that's the same thickness of what you're gonna be using. And this is all half inch stock. And then you set that depth. And what's nice about this, now that I've got two of these things, I'm gonna be able to just adjust the depth, like I said, and not mess around with changing the bits. So I'm gonna set that up. Now, an interesting thing is, you know, I, mar I, I wanted to mark that distance between right here and right here because ideally you would want it to be right on that edge so that you weren't having to split the difference between a little bit of overhanger on either one and it ended up uh this distance is five inches but the board if i measure the board from this side to this side it's a little it's right around five and an eighth so that angle made that uh, angle just a little bit wider than five inches. So now I can set up and do the dovetailing. Okay, so two things I've learned recently is I typically would have my face right down in here. I would like to actually watch the dovetails being cut. And I was watching a couple of the other videos on YouTube with the Peace Tree guys. And, you know, you're really better off having the wood that you're working on over on this side. And then I could just stand up here and not get anything on my face or chest, right? And uh, the other good thing is uh, when we were doing this yesterday with my buddy Dale, and we went ahead and put this uh, iron or steel block here, and this really sucked up the majority of the dust. So I'm gonna do that again. Now I've got the, I've got the router uh, going on. Now I gotta turn on the uh, vacuum. It's going to get louder for a second. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And uh, what I'm going to do is now, this is my test piece, and I'm going to run the another test piece on the um, what are going to be the ends. So this is a, a small example of what the front and back are going to be like. Okay, here's a, an example of yesterday where we had we were just doing some practice pieces. Now it is important to know what is your outside uh, piece or the so these are going to be the ends. Again, this is an example, but since it's a little fatter on this side, the top of the dovetail versus the bottom of the dovetail, I got to make sure that I'm putting it into the fixture. The outside of the box is going to be away from the fixture. Okay. Okay. So I just set this up and typically I'll rest this board over here, but since I've got this so the outside, on here i'm gonna just put this right here for a second and i gotta draw a couple lines just matching this where the dovetail fin fingers are so i'm using a sharp pencil you could be using a marking knife if you want an exacto knife 
And you only really need to do uh, one set of lines, but I like doing uh, several. And then from here, you match. Oops. And from here, you just match where those lines are and then put the uh, clamps on. When you're notice, this is my my temporary Moxon vise. All right, so I just drilled a couple holes in a board down here. I've got this piece of wood here. I put a couple three quarter inch clamps on there. And I don't use it very often, except when I'm doing this kind of operation or doing a little hand planing on a board. But it's, uh, it's a nice little way to hold on to your stuff. So I went ahead and drew a, another line because I had the line on the wrong side. <laughs> Again, you gotta be slow when you're doing this. And so I set the depth. This is my new uh, finger saver fixture that I made today. That was the one I did uh, yesterday. And if you're gonna make one of these, make a longer, longer handles. These Purple Heart handles look nice, but uh, the longer ones are a little bit easier to control. Anyway, I digress. So now all I gotta do is I've matched up the lines on that board. And now I gotta do is go ahead and route it. It's a good idea to hit any uh, little fuzzies, and you usually get them with this, but... Okay, so that's the pins. That's the outside. And again, this would be very easy to get this mixed up one way or another. So again, it's a good idea to mark these. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Again, these are both test pieces, so I don't really care about the species. And I like cutting the uh, dovetails and the pins a little long. I actually had them a little bit too long here, so I'm gonna make an adjustment there. But the nice thing about this is I'm dead on right here. And that's what I was worried about. And this is why I didn't put the top and bottom bevels on. Okay, so like I said, I didn't, this, I thought this was set a little bit too deep. I've uh, readjusted that. Now I'm gonna cut one side and the way this is set up, I like having this uh, fixture wood just resting right on here. I got, I got much better stability that way. And I'll make sure I'm nice and tight. Oh, this is on. Now I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna route this angle. The, the angles, the board's going this way right now. And then I'm gonna flip it and th then the board will be going this way on the other side. If you wanted to, you could put a little piece of tape on here. As a matter of fact, I think I will. So tape can help uh, with some tear out. Let's see how this is going here.
So I got a little bit of tear out on the back. And none on the front. So I'm gonna, all these other pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and put tape on both sides. But the tear out's really not that bad on the back. This backer board's old. I've done lots of different dovetails on here. I'm really due for another one of these. So I think for the rest of these pieces, I'm going to put tape on both sides. And like I said, this, this was here. And now I'm just going to swap it over to this side. And I'm going to do all four pieces while I can. See, that's what I mean. I'm going to do the front and back of both sides. And all you really got to do is make sure these fingers are on both sides of the board. If this board wasn't five inches, then you've got a little uh, side plate and you might have a quarter inch on each side. And especially if you put that bevel cut on the, on the top and the bottom of this thing. So let's see how this works. These quick and easy clamps are real nice. And uh, that feels real good. Everything's nice and tight. Okay, let's see Let's see how well the tape worked on both sides So this is just a trick to help prevent tear out Okay, that helped quite a bit Yep, that helped real, a whole lot, so. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other pieces over on the workbench there. So this is just more of the same, so I'll be back to you in 20 minutes. So I went ahead and taped up all these just so I'm not doing two different processes at the at the same time. It's tough enough to keep everything organized. So I got a few more uh, tails to cut on the long pieces of cherry. By the way, it's a real good idea to trim that excess tape off right here. That way um, you're not getting a false reading by having the edge of the wood against this edge of the uh, fingers. Okay, so these came out really nice. Very minimal, if any, tear out. And I'm happy with that. So now I gotta go back and orient this. So I've got the first end piece on here. Again, make sure you clear off the tape off the uh, sides. And then I've um, gotta go ahead and put the lines on, on the top to identify where, the, uh, where these fingers go over here. So again, like we said a little while ago, this is going to be outside with these, with these pieces, you just rotate them this way. Um, and you got to make sure that you rotate this uh, the correct uh, way also. But right now, ooh, so this is the outside, so, and the, it's going to be, this is where you could really screw up real fast. So like I said, usually I have this sitting on here, but I've turned this jig around. So I just got to draw some lines using a real sharp pencil. And this will help me orient the board onto, or the fixture onto the board, I should say. Take your time. This is gonna be very easy to screw this up. I'm locked down and I'm putting this flat even though the board is now going this way. 
Oops. And switching router, make sure you're using the right router bit. This is the uh, rabbiting bit. And the trick with this is to just go slow. Now you can, on the other, on these fingers, you just go straight in, the bearing runs right on the, on the fingers. On this one, since it's a V-shaped, you can come in one side and out the other. You can come in this way and come in this way. But the main thing is go slow, and this tape is really helping. The other thing I did, I was getting a little bit of schmutz or something on here, maybe a little bit of masking tape, and I went ahead and cleared this up, uh, cleaned it up with some Johnson's Pace Wax, and now it's running really good. And it looks like minimal tear out. Now again, this is the outside of the board. So I want to make sure I rotate it this way. You can't flip it this way. Then you're going to have the uh, pins on either side. And your boxes aren't going to go together very well. So I'm just going ahead and report this, repeat this seven more. Okay. So the first one came out really nice. I can't believe I didn't make any mistakes. But I was going slow, and I got nice tight joints here. Uh, let's see, I got a little tear out right there. Like I said, I wanted this overhang so I could just sand these flush, but I think that's gonna come out just fine. So now I've got two more end pieces to do, and then it's dinner time. Okay, I got all the uh, tape off, I got the pieces laid out, and the uh, tape trick really worked pretty good. And uh, so let's see how they fit. Let's see. It's going together pretty good. I'm actually surprised I didn't screw anything up this time. So usually I make at least one mistake, maybe that's coming down the road, but... Uh, nice tight dovetails a very attractive box and here's the reason I didn't let me come in close here the reason I didn't cut these bevels on the table saw first I wanted to make sure I could line up the edges on the finger so I could certainly cut this up on the table saw we're probably just going to do that with a hand plane so I guess now the question is I got two of them oh look at that and look, I didn't screw up. I didn't even have to use my test pieces. So uh, I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit just to make sure this, this is, uh, that area is level across here and on the bottom. I'm going to have to determine how I want to put the bottom in. I haven't decided if I'm going to put an inset, like a dado or a groove in there, or just put a, a bottom that sticks to the, like that. I got to ask the wife who's uh, recording this. So I guess the big question now, who's getting the walnut one and who's getting the cherry one? Uh, also, there's going to be a, a handle through the center of this. That's going to be nice, a nice little tool, tool tote for their uh, gardens. So, hey, that's it. It's Tuesday. It's cold out here in the shop. It's dinner time. So let's pick up with this tomorrow. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bob's Wood Shop. Today I'm working on a couple tool totes. I'm working on a couple tool totes. Hey Dale, it worked like a freaking charm. Got two of them done. Once I got rolling, it was real easy. Didn't make any mistakes. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. 
And follow the, the link at the end of this for the part two of this project where I'll bring it to completion.